Please remain standing while the Mayor's Chaplain offers prayers. Oh, good afternoon. Uh, warm welcome. Great to be with you today. Shall we, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, for your wisdom, and for your support as we begin this meeting. Help us to engage in meaningful discussion. Allow us to grow closer as a group and nurture the bonds of community. Fill us with your grace, Lord God, as we make decisions that affect the people in our communities. And continue to remind us that all we do here today, all we accomplish, is for the pursuit of truth, for the greater glory of you, and for the service of humanity. We ask these things through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you very much. Please be seated. I'll uh, just take this opportunity to remind you to put your phones on silent. There's a button to turn that off. Okay, so uh, I need to advise you that officers are recording the public part of this meeting today, which will be uploaded after the meeting to the Council's YouTube channel. There are no plans for a fire alarm test. If you hear the alarm, please leave the building by the nearest exit. And please, as I said, ensure mobile phones are switched off. Restrooms are located on all floors, but please ask a member of staff for details should you require one. Okay, uh, the first announcement I have today is to pay tribute to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II following her recent death. As we mourn, we also reflect upon and celebrate a long, well-lived life in the most noble service of others. Throughout her long reign, Her Late Majesty was a source of inspiration, hope and unity for millions around the world. She served our country, the realms and the Commonwealth with complete dedication, utter devotion and matchless dignity for over 70 years. Preston had the honour of welcoming Her Late Majesty on a number of occasions throughout her reign, most notably in 2002, when many thousands of Prestonians greeted her and the late Duke, late Duke of Edinburgh in our city centre. Preston was extremely honoured to be granted city status as part of Her Late Majesty's Golden Jubilee celebrations. This accolade remains a tremendous source of pride for Preston, and for us, it will ever be associated with our late sovereign. More recently, Preston was honoured to be named as the champion city for the Queen's Green Canopy as part of her Platinum Jubilee celebrations. This valu valuable environmental initiative will provide a lasting and living legacy of not just her, the Platinum Jubilee, but the long and illustrious reign of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. I will now bring in each group leader to pay their respects. I'll start with the uh, council leader, Councillor Matthew Brown, please. Uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you very much. Obviously, we send our sincerest condolences on behalf of Preston Labour Group and the wider movement in Preston following the death of Queen Elizabeth. Her life was a, a very long one, uh, dedicated totally to, to public service. And on a human level, obviously, you know, we send our, our sincere condolences to the royal family who've lost you know, a mother, grandmother, and great grandmother. So the, the loss of any family is really deep for them and obviously we send our empathy to them from the council chamber. Uh, the vast majority of people in Preston haven't known any other monarch rather than Queen Elizabeth. She's been a monarch for over uh, I think seven decades, 1952 she came to the throne and obviously people, the vast majority of people in our city haven't known any other monarch and she's been a great source of stability uh, to the people of Preston and beyond uh, at times of economic, social uh, turbulence within our our country. So obviously we send our heartfelt condolences and pay tribute to Her Majesty from not just the Preston Labour Group but the wider Preston Labour Party and the Preston Labour Movement and obviously the dedication to public service was second to none. We do not see that all, all the time with public servants and we all respected and were you know inspired by a public service throughout the, those decades Mr Mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, if I can bring in Councillor Mrs Whitton, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I think the death of the, of the Queen Elizabeth II came as a shock, actually, to many of us 
Even though she had reigned for over 70 years, she'd been a constant part of our lives. Many of us had a fantastic time in June, celebrating the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, and these memories will always live all with us. She was a faithful and obedient servant and served our country well right until the very end. We send our heartfelt condolences from our group and also our best wishes to King Charles III at the beginning of the new Carolian age. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Councillor John Potter, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, on behalf of uh, the Liberal Democrat group, we would like to also pass on our condolences. She was a mainstay of our country for a very long time, a child of empire that brought around a multicultural Britain that we can all be proud of. Um, I was very fortunate to go down to London during the period of mourning and see what an impact she's had, not just in this country, but particularly the Commonwealth, which she was especially keen on. So it's a very strange place we're entering to without her being by our side, but we must go on and we wish all the best to King Charles. Thank you. Uh, now, will you all please join me in standing for a minute's silence as a mark of respect for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Thank you very much. Please be seated. I have also written to our new monarch, His Majesty King Charles III, advising how as Lancastrians we are proud to have the Sovereign as Duke of Lancaster, and I echoed the historic words from the pro proclamation of Your Majesty's accession, read in the city on Sunday the 11th of September, in beseeching God to bless His Majesty with long and happy years to reign over us while also giving thanks for our late sovereign, Queen Elizabeth II. Now, I also have the sad duty to report on the recent death of former councillor and mayor's consort, Norman Abram. Norman was a councillor representing the Lear Ward from 2002 to 2008. His funeral was held on the 29th of September and the council was represented there. My condolences are sent to Norman's widow, honorary alderman, Christine Abram, his family and friends. I'd ask you to please stand again for a minute's silence as a mark of respect for our former colleague. Thank you very much. Please be seated. And finally, before we move on to the proceedings, uh, I'd just like to point out we've got a couple of plaques sit, sat down in front of me at the moment. Uh, one of them was presented to uh, the City of Preston from the Welsh Men's Rugby League team uh, as a thank you for hosting them over the Rugby League World Cup. Um, sadly, they lost last night to the Cook Islands, but they've got two more games to redeem themselves. 
Um, there are two other plaques here, which I believe Councillor Khan knows a little bit about. Do you want to say just a couple of quick short words? Is yes. Yeah. Um, the other two that you can see the plaques are a silver award that was uh, awarded to the Preston City Council from the Armed Forces Covenant. We are part of the Covenant since 2012 and this award uh, that's been given to us is a, through the Employer Recognition Scheme. So uh, it was a very strict criteria that we had to follow and demonstrate and evidence that not only were we aware and putting into place uh, uh, around the armed forces uh, what needs they were and taking those into account when we were designing our policies and delivery of service but also taking into account that we also have employers employees sorry uh, that are reservists and um, also to ensure that through our HR policy that they were entitled to the leave uh, if they were going off on training and also those employees that belong to the emergency services as well. So as I've said, uh, thanks goes to the community engagement team, the officers that work very hard to put the assessment together to submit it and it was through the Lord Lieutenant's office and Lord Shuttleworth awarded us this award. I picked it up last week uh, for the council and as, uh, as I say, it's a very prestigious award um, and there's not many councils that have reached the silver award. County Council do have the gold award and hopefully we shall achieve that soon as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, depending on how we progress today, I may adjourn to take a short comfort break, but we will see how we proceed as we go along. Uh, so moving on to item number two, declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest? Uh, if members can indicate if they have any disclosable pecuniary interests or personal and prejudicial interests in the items being discussed on the agenda. I see no hands up, so we shall move along. Uh, item number three is the minutes of a meeting held on the 25th of August 2022. Are members happy that I signed a copy of this minute? Excellent, thank you very much. Uh, item four is questions from the members of the public, however none have been submitted for this meeting. Uh, now we will take item number five, which is questions to cabinet members, chairs of committees and representatives of outside body bodies. Uh, members are entitled to ask a question of any cabinet member or chair of a committee within their portfolio or terms of reference. Uh, only one supplementary question may be asked, provided it is relevant to the original question. We haven't received any written notifications for questions from members appointed to serve on outside bodies. If anyone has any questions to ask on the information items on the agenda, including the special, special urgency decisions, they should do so at this point, as another opportunity will not be given when we reach those items. Um, so, first of all, can I please bring in Councillor Wise? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, my question is to the Leader of the Council. Um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, you and I both spoke at the Enough is Enough uh, rally in the flag market about the cost of living crisis. Since then, we've had a new Chancellor. Perhaps we're going to have another one soon. Uh, so far, we've had four in four months. Perhaps it'll be five in four months. Who knows? Um, the, la the current Chancellor uh, scrapped most of the mini-budget of the previous Chancellor, except for the bankers' bonuses. Inflation is now at 10.1%, which means the price of food continues to rise. Uh, mortgages and rents are still going up. And um, it was another Tory con, wasn't it, about the price of gas and electricity prices being fixed uh, so that no one, uh, in a, in a, not in an average household, paid more than £2,500. I'd like to know what an average household is because I've yet to meet somebody in that so-called average uh, household. But of course, the current Chancellor, who knows what will happen next, has actually scrapped it from next April, the so-called uh, price cap. Um, 
We've got a Tory government in chaos. I didn't know when I wrote my speech that the Prime Minister was going to resign, so we'll have actually had three Prime Ministers in four months, won't we? Oh, she's resigned as the leader, um, and so don't worry, I'm coming to my question. And people are giving up pets because they can no longer afford them. We're about to have huge cuts in public expenditure expenditure and we don't know if benefits and pensions will rise in line with inflation. So would the leader of the council agree with me that, si that the situation has not improved for the vast majority of people living in Preston and what can we do to mitigate this apart from hoping there's going to be a general election? Thank you, Councillor Wise. Obviously, we're both proud to, to stand shoulder to shoulder with uh, the brave workers taking industrial action of the unions as Labour politicians, and I don't apologise for doing that at the Enough is Enough demonstration. Um, it's quite grotesque, isn't it, that we have Conservative politicians involved in uh, promoting their own careers while we're seeing an increase in food bank use, we're seeing an increase in destitution, in child poverty, and we're going to have the misery of another Conservative leadership contest with probably two candidates, or it might be one, just importing on the nation uh, the misery they could impose on the majority of us why they personally satisfy their own career ambitions. But obviously, our focus will continue to be how we tackle the cost of living crisis as a city council. We've done a lot already. We had a cabinet report that went three or four years, sorry, three, three or four weeks back to cabinet, and we're going to have, following an internal working group, we're going to have a an event at the Gujarat Hindu Centre on the 8th of November 2022. Now at that, what we're doing is we're bringing together all our big institutions, like the police, the university, the hospital, housing providers, we're bringing together the voluntary sector, we're bring, bringing together trade unions, faith representatives, and we need a pandemic-like response to this, because the reality is, is people are in serious danger. This is actually an emergency at this moment in time, the cost of living crisis. So we're going to act, and we're going to try and influence whoever we can to leave no stone unturned. Our members already have some really good ideas, like we need to do a lot more to promote the real living wage, and if employers can pay £10.90 an hour, they should pay it to help people with the cost of living. In addition, we could have conversations with housing providers saying, you know, if, you, uh, if people genuinely can't afford to pay the rent, please do not evict them. Obviously, more work we're doing around uh, food, we're doing a lot of work around food, housing affordability, energy efficiency and the rest of it. So we need that kind of response and uh, you know it really is breaking our hearts at the moment Valerie as Labour members as you know what our communities are going through and I don't think it's particularly good for the officers as well being in this challenging financial environment. So what we'll do is we'll do what we can as a community and as a council to take the lead and make sure we protect people as far as we can. Thank you for the question. Do you have a supplementary? Yeah, um, I'm obviously delighted with that answer um, from the leader of the council. Just want to stress that, you know, the impact that what's happening on people is just immense. I mean, people might think, well, giving up pets doesn't really matter, um, but I'm sure you would agree, uh, uh, Councillor Brown, that you know. Pets actually is really good from a mental health perspective, and there's some tragic stories of people having to do that. The fact is that one in three people are now eating food past their use-by date. One in seven people are missing a meal. You've mentioned child poverty. Child, child poverty is just going through the roof. So I really hope that we will show as a council that we're really on the side of the people and Preston and do whatever we can. And would you agree with that, please? Uh, yes, I would. We're a wealthy country in the UK. Everyone has a right to have a fulfilling, enjoyable, creative and productive life. We've seen the wealth of billionaires increase in 10 years from over 200 billion to 600 billion. The gap between rich, uh, poor and rich is getting worse and worse and obviously it's getting to a level that we're heading towards probably a Dickensian society going back to the 19th century, some of the things that we're facing in terms of the public health of our communities. So. Uh, it's pretty disgraceful that we've got politicians that appear not to want to address that to the scale that's needed. And obviously, my view is we need a general election, because if we're looking at an opinion poll deficit of the Conservative Party of 36%, I think that's a pretty damning indictment of uh, what the country think of them at this moment in time. And obviously, they, were, they, they used the Brexit position in 2019 to obviously gain some advantage then. But I think uh, two years maximum, and we'll have a change of government, that's what's needed. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Potts, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, my question is for Councillor Borrow, but I realise it also falls into Councillor Henshaw's remit as well, but I'll start with Councillor Borrow. Um, the previous uh, Conservative government, that of an hour ago, um, got very few things 
through uh, the legislation books or started that process. However, one of them was investment zones. Now, that has been clearly given concern to many environmental groups, such as the RSPB and Natural England, as well as various groups to do with planning and housing reform about what that would mean if we get unregulated, basic carte blanche given to developers in this area. Um, I understand you and Councillor Brown are working uh, closely with the County Council with it, but could you acknowledge and also explain if you share my concerns that this cannot be allowed to just ride roadshot over our natural environment, particularly when we're in a climate emergency and a biodiversity emergency? Councillor Barrow. Uh, thank you, Councillor Potter. <coughs> Just to explain to members, the uh, government has asked the upper tier authorities, in our case, Lancashire County Council, to bring forward proposals for investment zones. The County Council asked the district councils to put in an expression of interest by the end of last week, which Preston did. The leader and I have had a number of meetings with officers. Uh, we both share serious concerns around the concept of investment zones and I've got to say I can remember enterprise zones and free ports and all the analysis that's been done on the uh, effects of those and they're not very good. It's not the best way in terms of economic development. Uh, the leader wrote a letter to the County Council in terms of the expression of interest but did mention quite a long list of concerns that we would have before we actually agreed to go ahead and that included environmental issues, it includes planning issues, it includes issues around uh, affordable housing, a whole host of things uh, and we would, if, if Preston was to become an enterprise and we were looking at the station quarter, uh, we would expect our concerns to be addressed in any agreement with government in due course. Thank you. You have a supplementary? No. In which case, uh, Councillor Mr. Switham. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Now for something completely different. Uh, my question is to Councillor Meehan. Um, it was World Menopause Day on the uh, 18th of October, and you've signed the Workplace Menopause Pledge, which is great. What does it, this actually mean, though, and what support will you be offering for those going through the menopause at Preston City Council? Thank you. Yeah, thanks, uh, Councillor Mitton. Yeah, ha happy, very more than happy to support the World Menopause Day and indeed the support that we offer our um, staff and councillors here at uh, Preston City Council. And I haven't got details. We have got um, a, a support line and all um, members of staff and officers and indeed senior officers who actually brought this forward are well aware of um, a lot of the um, there's been a lot of um, education and training given as to um, the, the way that women have to suffer and that suffer suffering largely has gone um, unrecognized in the past and suffice to say that there's been a lot of um, counselling given and there is counselling available for anybody that needs it and, but the important thing is that we have raised the awareness and in, all managers are aware of it now. You have a supplementary? Thank you Councillor Meehan for that. Uh, can, can we just make sure that the support line is circulated to us all and the councillors uh, so that we have the information that we can use? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, um, Councillor Whittam. Yes, there is a support, support available to everybody, and there's, indeed there's an awareness event on the 10th of November between 10 and 2 where people can come and chat, and I don't just mean women. I mean anybody can come and chat and talk it over with people who know about it. Councillor Khan, did you want to come in? I think uh, Councillor Mean has covered that just to say that <coughs> there is a awareness event on the 10th of November in the VCFS sector has been invited so that they can also share and, um, in the work that's been done and it's about exchanging ideas and also to help us to raise this awareness further. Yep. Thank you. Um, Councillor Thompson, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, my question is to Councillor Burroughs. Um, I believe that the annual SIL report has not been published as yet, hopefully it will come through, but last year's wasn't published either. Can you tell me when you're going to publish it 
do you have any idea when you're going to publish it and the one that you were supposed to have published last year? Sorry, Mr. Mayor, I didn't hear the question. I heard a, a report mentioned. I didn't hear what the report was. I'm sorry, I didn't. Uh, I did think you'd, you'd heard it. <coughs> um, I was wondering when you were going to publish the SIL report, the annual SIL report, which was supposed to have been published last December, and it wasn't. And I'm wondering if you're going to publish one this year, and is there going to be a catch-up from last year as well? Uh, I can't answer the question at the moment, but I will write to all members of the council with the information within a week. Thank you. Do you have a supplementary for that? Um, Councillor Saxena, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you, can, you can hear me all right, can you? Uh, I'm just wondering what's the matter with the... Um, I, th I think the volume might be low on the... Uh, yeah. Right, can you hear me now? <laughs> Right. Uh, my question is, for, is also for Councillor Mean. Uh, uh, Councillor Mean, I wonder if you can update the Council on the Rugby League World Cup, please. <laughs> oh, thank you, Councillor Saxena. Happy to. Yeah, um, as the Mayor mentioned, last night was um, Wales's first game and he and I both attended the match. It was extremely cold and sadly our home team didn't win. But it was a really good match, wasn't it? Um, this afternoon, actually, there's a tournament going on at um, the UCLan Arena. Um, there are teams from uh, 10 teams from local schools around Preston that are um, uh, competing in a, a rugby tag league and members of the uh, Wales team will be present and I think it's absolutely um, fantastic because this, this has only happened since we were um, won the um, opportunity to actually host Wales as our um, in, in our city and because of that we've had um, a rugby league uh, development worker in um, place for the last two years because obviously the World Cup was delayed for a year and he's been working with local schools. We've, he's employed in partnership with UCLan ourselves and the rugby league and he's been developing the sport across primary schools in particular but also at the secondary schools as well so it's, it's given a fantastic opportunity to some of our schools I mean actually um, some of the children from St Joseph's Primary from St Matt's Ward were actually there last night and they were the flag bearers for the, the Wales team and it was a fantastic um, event for them to be at and I think it, it's wonderful because you know that the, the um, Participation in sport is really good for health in all ways, physical health, but it's also great at um, you know, extending a healthy lifestyle and building up social interaction. So it's a win-win all round, other than the Wales team. But they have got two more games to try and recoup. Thank you. Is there a supplementary? And as a supplementary, just to say, I did support Wales last night, even though I am Australian. So uh, just for the record, I did have something that was red. Councillor Saxena, sorry, did you have a supplementary? Thank you. Can everyone hear okay now? Was that all sorted? Wonderful. Okay, uh, moving on to Councillor Walker, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <laughs> questions on the market or the financial viability of the market, so whoever wants to answer this one can do. Um, first of all, I'd like to pay thanks to uh, late Councillor uh, Peter Rankin, who uh, determination and uh, hard work uh, made uh, the, the, the market happen eventually and uh, a credit to him really for, for what, what's happened. Um, but my question goes back to from 2006, 2018 we've seen the highs and the lows regarding the viability of the market and in light of what we're going to discuss today I'd like to ask has the rental income and the borrowing match the projections given to us prior to the market project was voted on the last time. Councillor Boswell. I, mean, I don't know if I'm in a position to answer that, even if I could answer it, because I'm sure that is abstract financial information. That at the very least, it, it might well be below. And also, I would need prior notice so I can check out the figures on that. Of supplementary custom? Yeah. It's an above the line question. Yeah. 
So if you can pr provide a written response. Sorry? If you can provide a written response, yeah, that will be okay. wonderful. Thank you. Right. Do you have a supplementary question? Yeah, my supplementary was basically asking you to uh, provide the uh, viability analysis of the market comparing the incomes and the borrowings. That would be appreciated. Uh, that, that I can do that, but um, the market is vibrant, it works, it helped people out in the pandemic. Whatever the bottom line or the, or the finance over it, it's something we should all be proud of. Thank you. Uh, and if I could just ask if councillors can stand up when they're, they're speaking, please. Um, I should have said before that's my fault. No problem. Uh, right, if I can bring in uh, Councillor Henshaw, please. <laughs> Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I have a question for the leader. Um, I'd actually really like to ask Councillor Potter, but I'm not allowed. So it's a question for the leader. So we've opened today's proceedings with a beautiful prayer that talked about nurturing unity. Um, community, sorry, not unity. Could have been unity. So my question to Matthew is, in view of this, do you think it's acceptable when a leader of the opposition sort of verbally attacks a backbencher who's produced a notice of motion. Um, obviously, the implications of attacking somebody like this means that confidence is going to be knocked and unity and community is, is not going to be achieved in this chamber. And personally, I'd like a, an apology for Councillor Hindle, but it's a question to the leader. Is this sort of behaviour acceptable? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Henshaw, I think both Labour and Conservative groups were rearing our unanimity around the behaviour of the Liberal Democrat group last council. It wasn't just uh, one member, it seemed to be a number of members. It wasn't dealing with the issues at hand. There was very personal references referred to uh, allowances and a ridiculous accusation that when you're actually in opposition at the county hall, you can actually bring about change, which is absolutely nonsense. So I thought it was a very good notice of motion. And the reality is, is that we've struggled to get female members involved in local politics. You, John, remember the days when it was so male dominated with all parties, and now it's much better, especially of our group, and we will soon be 50%, I should imagine, in the next year or two as a group. Um, I think you should apologise for the behaviour of your members because some of the things that were said were completely unacceptable, making reference to allowances, a condescending attitude, very much a self-entitled attitude in many ways, and it's just not the kind of environment we need to actually have a genuine debate about the ideas. And I think all of us need to look at our behaviours, but I really hope next time you'll consider how you ask questions and also the way that you actually strategize what you do because it wasn't particularly well received on this side and we've got a lot more members on our side and they are right female members are the rightly sticking up for another female member as are the male members as well so uh, i think you need to be big enough to say sorry about what happened thank you very much mr mayor do you have a supplementary councillor henshaw okay uh councillor middlebrook please My question's to the leader, if you can hear me. Okay. <laughs> We're aware that United Utilities offered all local authorities a briefing on the work of their organisation and an opportunity for elected members to ask questions relating to their particular wards. With that in mind, would it not be appropriate to have the briefing for all councillors rather than a private briefing for cabinets only? Um, I have been invited to that. It's not yet happened. I think other members of the executive and officers have been invited to it. I'm, if that can be done, I'd like to see it be done. It's just the practicalities of whether we could achieve it because they approached us saying we'd like to brief your members. Um, we can ask the question, but ultimately it's a matter for United Utilities, really. So if we can do it, we will do it. I hope that, that supports what you say. Thank you. A supplementary question? Okay, uh, Councillor Iqbal, please. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, really, before I ask a question to uh, 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 Councillor Khan, can I just uh, make a, a quick comment? In the last couple of years, I had uh, the privilege to attend uh, a number of these uh, armed forces events, and the veterans really hold our armed force champion and the council in, in very high regard. 
my question really was, in, in light of the current, current climate, the cost of living is going to be quite expensive. And uh, the utility price is going up. Can we then, Councillor Khan, uh, assure that the, as a weapon myself, that will keep up the good work going and try and encourage many other organizations as they can to assist our veterans should they need it this winter. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Iqbal, for the kind comments. Um, with regards to the cost of living crisis and the impact, I think we've already heard from the leader and uh, Councillor Wise as well, uh, the leader outlining the work that we're doing and we have been doing to meet you know, this cost of living crisis for our communities. Um, we have had involvement from the voluntary community faith sector, which we, I think they've demonstrated and shown through the pandemic that was an emergency, how vital they were, and without them we would not have been able to support our communities. It's something that I've been raising with Lancashire County Council around the importance of they were already starved of vital resources, yet we are asking for a greater contribution and reliance on them. So until we can get keep the stepping up and saying to the county that 73,000 is not enough to cover the whole of Lancashire County Council for the voluntary community faith sector to open their accommodation for warm spaces and offer services to the community, you know, it's very difficult to get them on board. But we can say in Preston, our voluntary and community faith sector organisations and projects that we have, we work very closely together and are with us on this. And through our household support fund, we are also allocating, which we do, to, to our food hubs and also the BCFS sector as well. So rest assured, we're doing all we can. Thank you. Is there a supplementary? Yes. Uh, Councillor Adair, please. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. My question is to Matthew Brown. Um, do you think that councillors and maybe cabinet members should have more respect for others online rather than um, targeting others with hate crime, for instance? Thank you. I think there's responsibility on all councillors to look at the behaviour collectively, as I mentioned before. Um, obviously, if there's any issues with uh, hate crime, it needs to be obviously sent to the monitoring office of the police, potentially, or uh, the, the standards committee. Um, I think I know what you're trying to refer to, uh, to be honest, in terms of uh, what's been said on Twitter and elsewhere. And I just think we need to look at how, you know, we look at we have this debate because people have different views around feminism and different views around LGBTQ and trans rights, but you know. Let's have that debate in a, in a friendly manner, and I think that's something that we could, we could all generally agree on. Thank you. Is there a supplementary? Okay. I, I have got no, more, no one else indicating to speak. Uh, put their phones on silent. Uh, we will move on to item number six, then, please. Uh, item six is a report uh, on an amendment to constitution following a management restructure. Um, Councillor Brown, will you be taking that? I've got... Councillor Rawlinson down on here, which obviously isn't. Uh, yes, Mr. May, it looks like Councillor Rawlinson is being extremely sensible because he's, uh, he's self isolating because one of his close family members has come down with COVID. So he's been very sensible, so he needs to be commended for, for that. But the downside is I'm having to take his reports, of which there are eight. And I've only had about literally about 10 or 15 minutes to prepare, and obviously one eye on what's happening nationally as well, because that's distracting me somewhat. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, I will attempt to go through this one. So, the first agenda item is agenda item six. So, this is very simple. Obviously, the Employment Committee has agreed um, a restructuring of the senior management on the 6th of September 2022. Obviously, following those new responsibilities, what needs to happen is the constitution needs to be changed. So basically the recommendation is that the constitution is changed based around the restructuring that took place very recently. And I'm happy to uh, put that forward to the chamber, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Is that seconded? Thank you, Councillor Crowe. Um, got no one indicating they wish to speak. I'm not aware of any amendments. Uh, so on that basis, if we move to the vote, can those in favour please show? Any against? 
And any abstentions? No, that looks uh, unanimous. Um, moving on to item number seven. Uh, item number seven is a report on additional committee meetings for the year 2022 to 23. Um, Councillor Brown, I'm assuming that you're going to take that one again. Uh, Mr. Mayor, yes, my understanding is there's been requests from both the Audit Committee and Scrutiny Committee to have uh, extra meetings. I think with the amount of Cabinet members and lead members, it's difficult for Sue to interview us all. So there's been a request for an extra meeting. Obviously, there's a need in the Audit Committee as well. So it's just basically requesting that we have extra meetings. And I think that's good because we need as many meetings that are needed to actually deal with the democracy in which this Council imparts on the community, really. So I'm happy to recommend that being forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Is that seconded? Council Hull. Uh, no one's indicating they wish to speak. I'm not aware of any. Councillor Sexana, please. I think it would be appropriate at this moment for, for Mao to mention this, because there was a question uh, earlier from Councillor Thompson, which was asking about uh, what's happening about the SIL report. It's all tied down with these accounts, and uh, as soon as they've been through an audit, this special audit committee, then they will then be approved and, and they, they, they can be released. Uh, that applies to a number, I think also probably applies to the uh, market uh, in, in, in incoming as well, m money as well. So all, all that will, will then be in the uh, abstractive accounts. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Saxena. Um, I see no further indication to speak, so if we go to the vote, can I have a show of those in favour, please? Okay. And any against? And any abstentions? Uh, unanimous again, thank you. Uh, item number eight is a report on the need to appoint a nominative trustee to the Boylton, Horton and Farrington charity. Um, Councillor Brown, I'm sorry, is that you again? Yes, Mr Mayor, this is extremely simple, I think. Uh, this is obviously the Boylton, Horton and Farrington charities. Apparently the tradition is that the representative is from the rural areas, so the one that's been put forward is Councillor Stephen Whitton, and obviously is a uh, Labour Group were happy to accept that nomination to the charity. I'd uh, be interested to hear what the charity does in, in greater detail at some point, but uh, yeah, happy to put Mr. Mr Whitton forward. Thank you. Is that seconded, please? Councillor Mrs Whitton, thank you. I see no indications to speak. I'm not aware of any amendments, so if we can go to the vote, those in favour, please show. Okay. And any against? Any abstentions? Uh, unanimous again, thank you. Uh, item number nine is a report on the acceptance of additional funding for the Household Support Fund 2022. Uh, Councillor Khan, do you wish to move the report? Yes, Mr Mayor. Um, yes, this report seeks approval um, for the acceptance of further funding, Household Support Fund from the Government, and this is round three to help with the rising living costs. Uh, the amount that has been given to is up to 610000 to be spent by the 31st of March 2023. The criteria is the same, but however, uh, because of the impact on uh, the communities on the rise of living costs, there will be an expansion. We've not yet set out uh, how we're going to be spending it, how it's going to be allocated. Uh, that's still the officers are working on at the moment. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Is that seconded? Uh, Councillor Brown. Uh, I don't see any further indication to speak. I'm not aware of any amendments. So once again, if we can go to the vote, all those in favour, please show. Any against? Any abstentions? Uh, unanimous again. Uh, moving on, item number 10 is a report on achieving Preston's priorities, budget planning and financial forecast update. The report was marked to follow on your agenda and I've agreed to accept it as an urgent item. The dynamic nature of recent economic changes have delayed the report submission. Members need to note the implications of this forecast position prior to considering reports later on this agenda. Um, Councillor Brown, are you taking this again? Uh, Mr Mayor, thank you. Yes, this is obviously a standard item uh, we have on our budget. Within it, actually, there's a very interesting document on um, actually what we actually do as a council called Achieving Preston's Priorities. And I'm always quite inspired by what we're achieving, really. I suppose I would say that, wouldn't I? But if you actually look at the depth and breadth of what we're achieving, it's really significant and it's outlined within it. So what we do with our budget, it covers all the areas that we actually achieve. Obviously, there's huge challenges. The savings requirement has increased substantially. Uh, we feel there's some positive news which can actually help uh, 
alleviate that situation. And obviously, it's, uh, I think the decision is required as the council notes the implications of the updated forecast as set out in the attached document at Appendix A. E. And I can see uh, Councillor Potter wants to come in and potentially other members. So it's a budget document, an update that we do every six months, really. Uh, just sad Councillor Rawlinson isn't here because he'll have much better detail than I have. Thank you. Uh, is that seconded? Councillor Barrow, thank you. Um, Councillor Potter, you indicated you wish to come in. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, thank you, uh, Councillor Brown, for the, the introduction to this piece. Um, for members' reference, I'll be talking a lot about page. Well, I won't be talking a lot. I'll be talking about page 47, um, which is obviously the important page in terms of where our figures are, the raw numbers. Um, obviously, we'll discuss this in great length in February, but it is really important that all members are aware of the financial issues that are coming down the line very very quickly for this council if you look down at the bottom where it says uh, um, it's, it's about the I'm trying to think so you've got the blue line near the bottom and the two lines above that where it says transfer from uh, reserves um, you should see that next year we are transferring 5.2 million pounds from our reserves into uh, in just to make our budget balance and we need to find a million pounds worth of savings on top of that and then the following year it's 3.8 million pounds out of reserves and 1.5 million pounds worth of savings on top of that. And the following year, exactly the same. These are grim numbers to say the least and we shouldn't be in any, for a smaller borough council like we are, these, these are extraordinarily challenging and difficult decisions are likely to have to be made. Um, what I will say, obviously we'll have this much bigger debate in February but we obviously have some below the line items today and you have to imagine how all the items we discuss from now onwards will affect our ability to manage both capital debt and ongoing revenue costs and it is if you're not scared by these numbers you are not paying attention. Uh, Councillor Borrow please. Uh, <coughs> thank you Mr Mayor. Um, I just want to follow on from Councillor Potter's comments and I, I do notice remember that uh, some members attended a, a finance training session earlier this week and the, the budget position was gone through in some depth. I did note that there were no opposition members, Mr. Councillor Potter uh, and didn't turn up but I just would just emphasise that uh, if it is a difficult position we are probably not in as bad a position as many other councils and the increase in energy costs and staff costs way above the, ex the planned budget is going to make a big difference, not just to us, but to councils across the country. Clearly, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, whoever he or she is at the time of the budget, will need to do something to address the issues of local government finance. Um, some of my colleagues have looked at these figures and just said, how are we going to manage? And I just think there will be dozens and dozens of small Tory district councils who will just keel over unless something is done to manage this process. Uh, we are in a potentially difficult position. I would just comment on the fact that Councillor Rawlinson is not here, has managed the budget in this council really well over the last 10 years or so and we've got 11 and a half million pounds in revenue reserves on a budget of about 20 million. I think there are many councils who would wish they were in a similar robust position. Thank you Mr Mayor. Uh, Councillor Landless please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Brown, for presenting this. Um, I'm really just standing up to make some very simple comments. Firstly, to thank the, uh, Jackie Wilding and her team for preparing such a comprehensive report under very difficult circumstances. Yes, the, there are very difficult times ahead, and uh, I look forward with trepidation to the budget debate and the budget working groups over the next six months. Um, yeah, I hope we, we, you know, there are some positives in the report. I hope Preston does uh, carry on achieving its priorities. I, I noted an interesting thing in the report about uh, the increase in housing 
and how important that has had an effect on, on the income for the council. Um, it, it, a lot of that new housing tends to be in uh, rural, quite a lot in the rural areas, particularly in Grimsor and North West Preston and what have you. And um, I just like to thank those who live in those areas for making such an increased uh, contribution to the survival of Preston City's finances. Thank you. I have no further indications to speak. Um, Councillor Brown, if you'd like to come in. Yeah, just, just to respond, excellent comments from every single person. Um, you know, we are worried, John, very worried about the financial situation, but we do feel there are reasons for optimism. And obviously, it's been referred to the uh, expertise of both Martin and our officers as well. So we do feel there are ways we can actually keep the, the ship afloat, so to speak. Uh, obviously, we come into politics, we have a manifesto to do things. What we don't want to do is cut services to our community because we've had enough of that and obviously we'll, we'll avoid that as far as we can. But obviously we'll make sure we have a, a balanced budget, we'll make sure we spend on our key priorities and we're going to keep going. But again, it's another plea because you get that from every single party in the local government association, which I believe is conservative led. They do say fund local government to the degree that's needed and it never seems to be listened to sadly by central government. So uh, thank you Mr Mayor, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll now go to the vote. So can all those in favour please show? And any against? And any abstentions? It's unanimous again. Thank you. Um, item 11 is the notification of changes to the membership of committees. Are there any changes to be reported? Lots of heads shaking, so I'll assume that's a no. Uh, moving on to item number 12 is the Standards Committee annual report for 2021 to 22. Uh, the information, this item is for information only, but uh, Councillor Iqbal, do you wish to speak on it? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Really, as you said, this item for noting on leave, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all the independent people who do an excellent job on, on the committee. And really, all the complaints were dealt with locally without having need a, a formal hearing. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Iqbal. Um, so if we can now please note that report. Moving on to item number 13 is the overview and scrutiny annual report for 2021 to 22. Uh, again, this item is for information only, but Councillor Mrs Whitham, do you wish to speak on this? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, it is only for noting, but um, it's a different kind of format this time. I don't know if you've, you've noticed and read it. It's a super improved format, so I'm hoping you'll like it. Uh, and also, I just wanted to mention, we've just had two training courses recently on scrutiny, which provoked a lot of thought and debate, I would say. Uh, so we're looking at making some changes to scrutiny starting next week. And unfortunately, Freddie isn't here today, Councillor Bailey, but he's first in the hot spot next week. Uh, and we're allocating 30 minutes also at the end of the meeting to have another discussion about about work planning and how to take things forward as a committee. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Whitam. Um, again, that's just for, uh, for noting, so if we now note that report accordingly. Uh, item 14 is the Leader's Report. Uh, Councillor Brown, do you wish to speak on the item? Uh, uh, no, Mr Burr, no. Thank you very much. Um, so again, that was just for information only, so please, please note that. Um, item number 15 is special urgency decisions and details of one of these is included in the agenda. Uh, Councillor Matthew Brown, do you wish to speak on the item which again is for noting only? Um, again, no, Mr Mayor, I think everything's reported within there, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, once again, that's just for noting. Uh, so item number 16 is the date of the next meeting. Uh, the date of the next ordinary meeting of council is Thursday the 15th of December at 10 a.m. at the Town Hall here in Preston. And please do note that's 10 a.m. It's a change to the usual time. Uh, so uh, moving on, we need to consider passing the following resolution that the public be excluded from this meeting during consideration of the following items of business on the grounds that there is likely to be disclosure of exempt information which is described in the paragraphs of Schedule 12A to the Local Government Act 1972 which is specified against the headings to each item and that in all the circumstances of the case the public interest in maintaining the exemption outweighs the public interest in disclosing it. Um, so if you can have a show of hands if you are happy to agree the exemption and move to Part B. Uh, 